Hey Bobas, today I wanted to make a new video on making a reactive PNG for free since my other video is outdated with all the new Discord updates and the previous code on the website that I showed you got taken down. <laughs> so I found five new and different methods on PNG tubing and don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through each step. Some of these methods are gonna be a little more complicated than others and each method has its own pros and cons for usage. So follow along and pick which method is best for you. You. Oh, and if you're wondering how to make a PNG avatar, then you can watch this video I made on all the different ways you can create a PNG for free, and then come back and watch this video. I'm going to start with the easiest way to PNG and gift tube, since I know some of you are smooth brain like me and have short attention spans. Then I'll go in some more big brain 203 IQ methods for those of you who want to stand out and make your PNG gift to be more unique. Okay, so the first method is PNG Tubi. PNG Tubi was made by Unilux and it allows you to stream with your PNG avatar from your web browser without using Discord. However, you're only able to use this to stream just your avatar. If you want to add other people's PNGs for collabs, then you'll have to add it through Fuji's website, which I'll show you later in this video, don't worry. To get this set up, we need to head over to the GitHub website over to download PNG Tubi. And don't worry, I'll put the link in the description down below. And make sure when you're on the website, check to see if there's a brand new release. See how right here it says the latest? You want to click on that. And then you'll go over here and download PNG to be zip. And you'll want to put the folder anywhere on your computer where you won't delete it. So make sure you know exactly where to go put it. Next, you want to go over to the two images that you want to use. And you're going to have to rename them to exactly what the file over here says. Where it says sprite open for your open mouth one. And then sprite closed for your closed mouth one. Make sure these two files are named exactly how these two are. I cannot emphasize that enough. Like you literally have to make sure these are lowercase and then this has the capital C on it or else it will not work. So after you just drag it over here and you're gonna replace those two files. And I cannot emphasize this enough. You must name them exactly like that with the capital C for close and the capital O for open and make sure that the word Sprite is in all lowercase letters or else it will not work, okay? After you're done naming your files and dragging them over and replacing these files in this folder, you wanna take this index folder here and then drag it to your web browser. And then you wanna allow microphone. Ignore the scuffness. I know it looks all messed up. It's just because I don't have the right file size dimensions. It's not a big deal. But look, it's already working. As you can see, if for some reason yours isn't already reacting to your voice, then make sure that when you drag your HTML file, you allow it to recognize your microphone. And also make sure that your microphone is plugged in. And also make sure that your microphone is unmuted, okay? And that's basically it. You can bookmark this link to use for later. Okay, so how do you add this to your OBS or slobs? All you gotta do is go over to your sources, click the plus button, and then go to the window capture source. You can name it PNG to be if you want, and then press okay. And then you need to make sure that it is exactly matching the title. So you wanna go to this bar and then do window title must match. You can also get rid of the capture cruiser so that way they don't actually see your cruiser. It's kind of weird, you know? Then you select OK. You're going to right click this and go to filters. And we're going to go to this plus sign and we're going to press crop. And then you're just going to crop exactly how much you basically want it because you obviously don't want people to see your tabs or like any of this weird stuff. So I'm just going to crop it a whole bunch. Just one moment. And OK, I'm pretty happy with this crop. I think this looks really well. Then you're going to go to this plus side again and you're going to go to the chroma key and you're just gonna filter out the green. Now, something to note about PNG tubes is that you don't have to use green. You could use a blue screen, you could use a magenta screen, but regardless of what color you end up choosing, you would obviously key it based off of the color that you chose. I thought that would be pretty obvious, right? And if for whatever reason, if there's any outlines, you can make adjustments, but mine looks pretty good the way it is. So maybe you're wondering if you can use this with gift tubing. And the answer is yes, yes you can. In order to gift tube, do you see how over here there is these sprite open big and sprite open small? You would basically just need to make two more PNGs and name them exactly how it is right here for the different animations of your mouth moving and then just replace them. Okay, so say that you have all four of your images and you want to make it into a gift tuber. Then all you have to do is just select the animated sprite option. And now look, the mouth is just moving a whole bunch of different ways. There's also a lot of customization, like you can adjust the closed brightness, which is when you're not talking, it's how dark it'll end up going. So you see that, how it just dims and everything like that. You can totally customize it. You can also do the speaking cutoff threshold. So the higher the threshold, then it won't react to it. But the lower the threshold, the more it will pick up sound and react. 
One last thing to keep in mind when using this method is that you have to keep the window browser open. If you minimize the browser at all, then the PNG will disappear and it will not work. Yuna recommends you use a web browser that you don't use too often, you know, like Microsoft Edge. So that way it's easier to set up and just kind of keep in the background. So make sure you don't minimize the window at all. And that's it for method one. So let's move on to method two. So this method is similar to PNG Tubi, but this was made by Luna Olmoe on Ichito. And it's an app that you can use instead of a web browser. So you'll just head over to the Ichio website and you'll search for mini VTube. And then here, as you can see, it's free. So you just press the download now. Like I said, it's free. And then select whatever software you're using. I use 64-bit. And then you'll want to unzip your folder and then start up the application. And then start up your application. And look! Oh my god, this is hilarious. Oh my god, it's literally screaming. I love that. It's me though. Ah! Okay, let's be serious now. So we'll just kind of maximize this. And there is a lot of customization that you can do here compared to just the web browser on PNG Tubi. And yes, this works for GIF tubing because if you look here, you have all the different expressions that you can put, which these are optional as you can tell. And if you want to replace the images, it's as simple as just clicking on it right here and then just replacing the image you want to use instead. And if you don't want a GIF tube, then you can just click on the actual mouth here and you can press either change image or remove image to make it so that way it only just does the PNG part. And yeah, that's really it. If you want to actually make it more customizable, which one am I do that? And then see, it's already moving just like that. And something that I also noticed is that not only can you select or deselect if you want different transitions, but you can literally customize it so many different ways. Like look how I can change the vibration to shaking or shaking more. Like I could literally make it crazy or I could just make it bouncy when I talk or just really excited or nervous. Like you can add so much customization with this. And obviously you're probably not gonna wanna have to click on these in order to enable these, right? Well, that's why there's a hotkey button. You see that H right there? You can set your own custom hotkeys and then make sure, of course, you enable hotkey mode. Now say like you've created a whole bunch of different profiles here. You can literally add a certain profile here and it will literally switch the different avatars you have, which makes it very, very easy if you want a hotkey to switch your avatar to look like a different type of setting. And once you're done setting everything up, make sure that you actually press the save file here and you can just save your avatar in the same folder. Typically, you'd want to do that. So that way you could remember it for later. And if you can't remember where you saved that file, then easy, no problem. You just click on this folder here and it'll take you to where that was last opened. And now if you want to select your microphone, you click over here and then select your microphone there. And over here are the sliders where you can adjust the volume sensitivity. So like I said, this would be the threshold where the higher it is, the more it's gonna take for you to speak into the microphone to pick it up. And the lower it is, the more reactive it'll be. And what's interesting is that there's a delay sensitivity, which if you end up lowering this, it's gonna delay how much of this sensitivity is picked up through the microphone, which could really be useful if you don't want it to react right away to your voice especially if you have like noisy backgrounds or fans. Now when setting this up, you're gonna go over here and press the plus button. You're gonna select game capture and you can name it whatever. I'll just name it PNG reactive, press okay. Then you're gonna go here and select capture specific window. And then you're gonna go to the window here and select VTube mini. And of course you're gonna wanna get rid of this capture cruiser and make sure that you also fix this to the match title thing. You want it to have it say window title must match. So that way it doesn't end up switching the program on you randomly. And then press OK. Now we're going to have to do the little filter again. So it's very simple. You just go to the chroma key and then that's it. And I'm actually going to crop this a little bit easier rather than going through the crop filter. I think it's easy if you just hold down the alt button and then drag these little boxes here rather than trying to have to mess around with that filter. I think this is just so much easier. And this is usually what I use when I'm streaming. And then that's it. It ends up working just like that. One thing that I would like you to note though when using this is that if you have to make any random changes throughout your stream, when you actually go over to the window, it will show everything that you have that's going on in the actual application. So make sure that you already set your hotkeys just ahead of time so that way you're not seeing all of this when you're trying to switch stuff or if for whatever reason just set your screen to brb so that way people don't see what's in the application and that's it for method two okay bobas if you've made it this far into the video then first of all congratulations most people can't 
pay attention for more than like three seconds. And if you haven't already, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more VTubing related content such as tutorials or you know, more of me. It helps this channel grow a lot and I would really appreciate it. All right, now moving on to the third method, which is Fuji. This is the fastest and easiest way to make a reactive PNG for yourself and setting up collabs on Discord. All you gotta go is to the Fuji's website and then press the login button right here. Make sure that you enable the overlay. So you gotta click authorize. And then here you can upload your two images for your not talking and your talking. I already have mine set up here. But if for whatever reason you need to change your image, you just press the new image button right here and then you can select your PNGs. Once you've selected your PNGs, make sure you press the save buttons on both of these and then you can go over here and configure it however you want it. If you want there to be a bounce effect, if you want to include your image in different groups, if you don't want it to dim when it's inactive or don't want other images for your collaborations to be inactive. And you can also do like the spacing between the dims of the images. And once you're done configuring everything, make sure you click the apply button. To add this to OBS, or slobs, you just go to your sources, you press this plus button here, and then you select the add browser source. And then through here, you're gonna take the individual link right here, you're gonna copy that, and then select all of this and paste it into here. And I suggest that you kind of adjust the width and height here. I like having it by 1920 by 1080p, and then you'll just click OK. And afterwards, all you have to do is join a Discord voice chat that you want the application to be picking up your avatar for. And the image will show up just like that. Very easy. If you want to use a group browser source, all you got to do is just click on this twice. And you'll copy this link instead and then put this one into the URL browser source. And then this one will... And then this one will pick up everyone's reactive PNGs, which I know it looks cursed right now, but if I had like a whole group of people, it would resize everything and you could adjust it afterwards, but I have no friends. And once you're done with that, you're pretty much all set and you can start streaming right away. So what if this method isn't working? First, check your firewall. It could also be blocking the website's access with your firewall, so make sure to whitelist this site with your firewall on your computer and see if that works. If that's all good and it's still not working, then the second option would be to try to use it in the Discord desktop app version instead of being logged into the web browser version of Discord and see if that solves your issue. It literally says it right on their website that you need to use the Discord app for this. Lastly, if you would rather use the web browser version of Discord, then you might be having a web browser issue. This browser-based source will not work on some browsers, so if it's not working for you, then try using a different browser to see if that works. Usually Microsoft Edge works Works a lot better. Hey, you still there? This is the part where we finally get into the big brain territory. So if you've been enjoying this video so far, comment below big brain so I know you're still following along, okay? Now let's spice things up with our PNG gift tubing. Okay, this method is a little complex because of all the necessary steps you have to take to create it, but if you want to be a PNG tuber, gift tuber with no third party app, then this is how you can do it all within OBS Studio. I haven't tested this on Slog. First, download the OBS Studio plugins that I linked down below. And then of course, you're gonna wanna actually install them. Then you're gonna wanna open up OBS Studio. These pop-ups might come up for you. So what you're gonna wanna do is just press the okay. Go over to this box, you know, if you wanna take a look at all those amazing supporters that helped this awesome program become a thing. And then press the X button. Then what you'll wanna do differently is to make a new scene. And you can name it whatever you want. I'm gonna name mine reactive PNG and then press OK. I'll explain why this is important in a minute. Then you wanna go press this plus button under sources and go to image and I'm gonna name this one closing. And over here, I'm gonna grab my PNG of my close mouth and then press OK. And then I'm gonna make another image source and I'm gonna name it open. And I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do the this one and then press OK. Now we're gonna select both sources and you'll do that by holding down the control button and just clicking on both of them, you'll know because it's blue and highlighted. And then while holding the control button, you'll also press F to center it. And this is important if for whatever reason your images are kind of off center a little bit or your GIF images are a little off centered. This just kind of helps balance it together. Once you're done with that, you're gonna press this plus button and go over to the spectralizer source and add that in. And you can just keep the name as it is. This source allows you to see your volume input when you're talking for your reactive PNG. And of course, you're gonna wanna keep it under the bars mode so that way it's a lot easier for us to kind of see everything. And if you notice right now, the bars are not moving. That's because over here under audio source, you wanna select your actual microphone here. Now see, it's actually picking up my voice. 
This source allows you to see your volume input when you're talking for your reactive PNG. You'll want to keep it at bars because we're going to end up cropping the bars that show your voice input. This is going to be used as a mask later to hide your images. All right, so the width, you want this to be five pixels. For the height, we want it to be 200 pixels. And then for the spacing, we want that to be a one pixel. You're gonna wanna disable the automatic scaling, so uncheck that there. And then do you see the scaling size here? We're gonna wanna put this at 0.1, which, you know, you know what? There you go. Yes, you'll take this and scroll down. You want that scale boost to be completely zero. Zero. I tried to make it go down to zero, but I guess it has to be 0 0.001, so just leave it as is. So you can either increase or decrease this scale size depending on how sensitive your microphone is, but I'm gonna keep it at the 0.1. Now for this gravity bar, you want this to go up to 0.92. The gravity bar basically kind of works similar to that sensitivity filter that we saw in Mini VTube where it kind of delays how your PNG or your GIF ends up reacting based off of the input of your voice. So if you want more of a delay, then you could increase the number of that bar. Finally, you make sure you're all the way scrolled down and you see this detailed box here. We're gonna set this to 10 bars. I know it says bins, but it's basically bars. And then you're gonna wanna click okay. Now go back to your spectralizer. You're gonna right click on it and go to filters. And then we're gonna press the plus button here and add a crop filter. And then looking at these bars, we're gonna try to crop it to the one that literally goes the highest to our voice, which I kind of think is between the bar that's maybe in the middle somewhere right there. So once you find that particular bar, you're gonna start cropping all the way from the left until you get to it, then crop from the right, then crop from the top, and then crop from the bottom. You could use the same number you set for your spectralizer earlier as a guide we basically just want to have like a one pixel of the bar being shown because like i said earlier we're going to use that to mask our images and this number is going to be different for everyone based off of how loud you speak and what kind of spectralizer number you had it set to so so far i've already done the cropping for the left and the right now in order to kind of figure out your top and bottom one you can use the number you set for your spectralizer earlier as a guide and if that's a little too complicated for you let me just kind of simplify it if i had mine set to 200 pixels like we saw earlier so if you look on here we click on it i have it set to 200 pixels then over here you're just going to kind of minus those out a little bit because we just want one pixel of that bar so for the top part why don't we crop out 110 of the pixels which then leaves us 89 to crop out on the bottom because 89 plus 110 is 199 which leaves us one pixel which is what you're currently seeing right here and it looks pretty good to me so far if you notice there's a little bit of these blurs here which if that's the case we can just kind of crop a little bit more on the left and the right until those blurs go away and then it's just this nice clean little pixel once you finally got it to looking how you want it to be you know this nice little clean pixel we're gonna go back to the plus sign here and then we're gonna go over to this filter that's called scaling and acid aspect ratio and you're gonna press ok you'll go over to the scaling filtering and you're gonna want to click on it and select point and then over here for the resolution part you're gonna want to click on it and set it to exactly how you set your two images or your gifs which i set mine to 1920 by 1080p ta-da just like that and all you have to do is just press the close button here and after you're done doing that you're gonna go over to this little eyeball icon and then click it to hide that because we're going to be using that as a mask between our two images. And in order to do that, we're gonna go over to our open image right here. We're gonna right click on it and go to filters. You'll wanna click on the plus button and then select the dynamic mask. And this will only show up if you actually installed that stream FX plugin like we did earlier. Then you'll wanna click on this input source and then select the spectralizer source that we just made. Go over to this little slidey bar here and scroll all the way down until you see this alpha channel box right here. So it's all the way down. You have to scroll all the way down. And we're gonna change the base value to negative 99. And then the alpha input value be 100. This will make it so that way your PNG will appear when you are speaking and then when you're not speaking, it'll disappear. After you're done with that, you're gonna select close. And now we're gonna go to our closing image right here and we're gonna do the same exact thing. You're gonna go to the plus button, add the dynamic mask, put that in here. You're gonna go to your input source, click on the spectralizer. You're gonna scroll all the way down to the alpha channel. But this time we're going to be swapping the base value and the alpha input value. So what do I mean by that? We're gonna take our base value and set it to 99. And then the alpha input value, we're gonna set it to negative 100. 
So that way when you're not talking, this will appear instead. And then you'll press close. And then see here, it's already working. Every time when I talk, it'll open my mouth. And every time I don't talk, it'll close it. And obviously if you're using a GIF, then this will still work no matter what. It's gonna be the same thing. After that, if you want, you can group these three into the folder. How I did that was I held shift and I clicked on all three of them just like that. Then you'll right click this and select group selected items. And then you can name it whatever you want. I'll just keep them in the group, it doesn't really matter. And once you're done with that, you're gonna go back to whatever scene you usually use for streaming, it doesn't matter. And then you'll just go over to the plus button on sources and select scene. And looky here, we have our reactive PNG scene that we can select. And there you go. Now you can resize it however you want and put it wherever you need to for your stream. You now have a reactive PNG or GIF without using any third party apps. And if you manage to follow this method, then you should feel really proud of yourself because this is a pretty big brain trick. Something to keep in mind though, is that make sure your image and GIFs are like the same dimensions and already transparent or else it'll cause some issues when you're speaking. I'll link a background remover in the description below if you need help trying to remove your PNG background. And that's it. We can now move on to the last method, which is GIF PNG tubing with Discord Stream Kit. Yes, Bobas, we're actually gonna rev up our old video method with a brand new way that is a lot easier to follow this time. First, take whatever PNG or GIF that you want to use uh, for this source and then you're just gonna paste it into a text channel. And if you don't have a Discord channel just yet, it is incredibly easy to set one up for yourself and to create a text and voice channel. Uh, so make sure you do that first and save yourself some headaches. Like you can literally click this button and create your own. Next, you're gonna wanna go to the Discord Stream Kit website and select install for OBS. Unless if you're using XSplit, then install it for that. Then head over to the voice widget, go to this button that says server, click on it, and then go all the way to where you want to select the server that you want this to register for. Then you go to voice channel, and you're going to select the voice channel that you want it to pick up, which as we know, I only have general. And do you see how my person is already right there and it's already registering my microphone? Now you're gonna go over here to hide names and you're gonna check that. Then you're gonna go over to the right here and see this link, you're going to click on it and then you're going to copy it and we're going to use this link as a new browser source on either OBS or Slobs. I'm still going to be using OBS Studio. We're gonna press the plus button, go to the browser, and then you're going to create a new one. And you're gonna take this URL and paste that link that I sent you. I'm going to change this to 1920 by 1080, and then you're gonna press okay. And if you can see right now, it's already working. It shows my little icon to show that I'm talking. And this is actually useful just on its own if you wanna be in a little Discord group call and you're with people who don't really PNG stream, but you still wanna indicate who's talking when you're having a group session because it'll show their icons when they light up. It's a pretty neat trick, right? But obviously we don't want just our icon to show. We want it to show our actual PNG, right? Or our GIF. So what we're gonna do is we're going to click on this again to open this up. And now do you see here in this box where it says custom CSS? We are going to change this. We are deleting this. We do not want that. We are going to put in our own code. Don't worry, Bobas. I'm going to paste the code right in my description down below this video. This code came from Bakenadi's channel and I will link his original video in the description if you would like to follow his full guide for this particular method. Now with that code that you just got from my description, we're going to paste it in the custom CSS box. Now I know that's all really small and tiny, it's hard to see, so you just make it a little longer so you have an easier time looking at it. What's nice about Bakinari's code is that he makes it so easy for you to find where you need to paste the info. And if it's too distracting to try to do this in like the tiny little window of the CSS box, then just take that whole code that I gave you and put it into a notepad, and then you'll have an easier time seeing everything you need to paste. And then you can select all that and then just paste it right into the box. And then we're gonna scroll all the way up. And do you see right here where it says content URL? And then right in here, it says idle animation link. This right here inside these parentheses is where we are going to be pasting our image links. So we'll go to our Discord and I'm going to select my idle image by clicking on it. Then I'm going to right click it, select the copy link, go back to the source and it has to be inside these parentheses. So if you see right here, that's a parenthesis. That's a parenthesis. This is a semicolon. Do not delete those or else it won't work. So you're gonna take it, highlight this part right here and then paste that link. Then after that, you're going to scroll down just a little bit to where it says speaking. And there is another content URL. 
This one, we're going to be pasting our talking PNG. So go back to Discord, click off of that, click on this, right click this, copy link, go back to here, highlight this part, and then paste it. Now there's one more thing that we need to do for this. You gotta scroll all the way back up and you see right here, the very first line where it says Discord ID, we need to paste our actual Discord ID. So you're gonna go back to Discord, you're gonna click out of this, you're gonna go over to your name, you're gonna right click on it, and you see this copy ID button, you're gonna click that. And then go back over here, make sure you highlight right in here, whoops, sorry. Make sure you highlight right in here and you're going to paste it. You see how there's quotation marks and there's little equal sign, and brackets and parentheses, do not delete that, okay? Do not delete any of that. Be careful when you paste this stuff in or else it won't work and don't comment on my video saying you can't figure it out how to work because I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a banana at you. Now the last thing that you need to do is to change the width and the height of that source to the same dimensions as your PNG, your GIF. The max dimensions that this source can handle is 4,096 by 4,096. So if your image or GIFs are bigger than that, then you might see some weird cropping. Bakinari recommends making GIFs around 2000 by 2000 or 3000 by 3000, and that's really all you need to do for adding the source. I actually don't really know what the dimensions are for this, so I'm gonna try to keep it like this and just kind of test around to see if it works, and if I have to crop it, then I crop it. Once all of that is finished, you just need to go into the actual voice channel where you had selected earlier in the Discord Stream Kit website, unmute your microphone, and start talking. Mine already put me in there, right away but if for some reason yours didn't then just click on it to join and go back over here to make sure it's working and see it's working in order to make your avatar show up you need to be in that voice channel otherwise the image will disappear until you re-enter that voice channel again something to keep in mind when using this method for collabing with people who aren't using the same stream kit discord method as you and they're using like a different voice channel their source might not show up because the discord stream kit needs you to be connected to the specific voice channel that you made for the client to work and those are all the different methods that i have for you to show you how to png tube or gift tube i'm really sorry for those who ended up having a lot of difficulties with my old video but like jin's vtubing career these methods get Get retired since new technology and new method for VTubing and PNG tubing become more readily available. So right now at the time of this video being uploaded, all of these methods work. So give them a try and let me know in the comment section down below which method you went with and to confirm if the method is still working. So that way all of us who might be watching this in the future will know if anything has been updated or changed. And if stuff does need to be updated, then I'll make a new video about it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye Bobas!